Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And I think I'll start out with uh, Alzheimer's. As Senator Stabenow mentioned, we have a number of, of our Alzheimer's friends here with us today. The FDA's accelerated approval pathway has provided a lifeline for countless Americans advancing access to safe and effective medicines for cancer, rare diseases, HIV, and other conditions like Alzheimer's years before these treatments could otherwise come to the market. Unfortunately, this administration has taken unprecedented steps to erode this pathway, deterring life-saving innovation and delaying access to care. This troubling trend began with CMS's coverage restrictions for an entire class of Alzheimer's therapies, and it seems to set to continue with the recently announced accelerating clinical evidence model, which would slash payments for treatments that rely on accelerated approval. Secretary Becerra, I recently led a letter urging the administration to abandon this misguided model, given the potential for slower and slimmer pipelines of new medicines for seniors, among other serious conditions. I also wrote to you last year about the grave implications of the Alzheimer's coverage decision. How does your department plan to ensure that accelerated approval pathways remain a robust and viable option for innovators and, most importantly, for patients? Senator Crapo, you've uh, touched on something very important uh, for me, having my father, my in-laws, my father-in-law and mother-in-law, dementia, the last years, last months of life, uh, very tough. We were there. My father died in my home. We cared for him. Same with my mother-in-law and father-in-law. My, my wife and her siblings cared for them. Um, this is tough. Dementia hits all of us, not just the, the patient. And we want to be there. And we're fortunate that in America we're coming up with new innovative treatments and we're doing everything we can to accelerate them. I, I give you the evidence of the COVID vaccine. No one expected that the COVID vaccine would come out so quickly. Whether it's Alzheimer's, COVID, uh, hepatitis C, we're moving and we want to be there and we'll look for every innovative approach, every pathway possible to make sure that one, we can put a uh, a safe and effective drug in front of the American people, and then also determine whether it will be covered by Medicare. Well, I understand that uh, that commitment, but the the accelerated model that you had adopted or are looking to adopt and pursue is going in exactly the opposite direction. I encourage you to revisit this model. Let me move on to Medicare Advantage. CMS recently released their annual advance notice, which included some significant changes to the Medicare Advantage risk model for the upcoming bid process. We've heard concerns from providers, patients, and plans that these changes will disproportionately impact the most vulnerable MA beneficiaries, including those with low incomes or chronic conditions. Mr. Secretary, does the administration plan to address these concerns in its final MA rule? Senator, thanks for the question. Uh, nearly half of all seniors who have Medicare use the Medicare managed care model. Uh, this is critically important. We are absolutely going to make sure that when the final uh, gavel falls on this, it will not only move us in the right direction with more efficiency, but it also will protect every Medicare benefit for seniors and disabled Americans who use the Medicare program. Well, thank you, and I encourage you to look at this carefully, and if you haven't already done it, to conduct an impact analysis to determine, to determine how the model you're currently considering change, changes to would affect different groups of be beneficiaries. I think you'll find that, uh, once again, these proposals are going in the wrong direction. Let me move on to one where we can agree. <laughs> That's on telehealth. As the budget request mentions, my colleagues and I came together late last year to advance a crucial two-year extension of wide-ranging telehealth flexibilities, including for Medicare beneficiaries. Without further action, however, these policies will expire at the end of 2024, creating a coverage cliff for tens of millions of seniors across the country. Secretary Becerra, I realize this requires Congress to get engaged and in, in involved, but from the administration's perspective, how should Medicare telehealth coverage look in the longer term? And can you commit to working with Congress to develop meaningful solutions that will protect access well beyond the end of next year? Yes, Senator, this one's crucial. We absolutely will work with you because we don't want those statutory uh, flexibilities to expire. We're going to need your help. Thank you for the leadership you've demonstrated over the past on this one. We, for example, want to make sure that everyone has the broadband that will make telehealth work. 
We want to make sure that everyone can use a doctor wherever that doctor is located. That requires the states to work with us to make sure we might be at across state borders. We want to make sure that if you're in rural America or inner city uh, America, you don't have to worry that you don't have a way to get to the doctor. You'll have access to telehealth. Well, thank you. And encourage us as strongly as you can to get that legislatively done. Yeah. I know Senator Wyden and I are working very closely together on this, and I just want some strong support from the administration. Thank